Audio jump. Hey guys, Sasha here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to talk about COVID and pregnancy. If you guys follow my Instagram, then you know back in November, I was actually super, super sick. And we think that I did have COVID and I did get tested and it came out negative. But the reason why we think that it was a false negative was because my boyfriend Walter actually tested positive for COVID. This happened all back in the beginning of November. He got COVID from work. He got tested for it. He turned out positive. But the days, the days before he tested positive, he felt fine. So obviously, you know, we're boyfriend and girlfriend. He kissed me before he goes to work and stuff like that. And then we found out that a couple days later that he was positive. So us not really thinking, you know, too much of it. Um, he quarantined right away. Um, he did not come out of his room only to use the restroom. And he had a designated restroom. And I was with our son and, you know, taking care of him. Um, I believe he was out, like, I want to say maybe maybe 13 days i want to say 13 days he was quarantined you know i brought food to him and all that stuff and then i noticed after he started to feel better i started to feel sick and i was like what's going on you know maybe it's just a cold because two weeks prior i got the flu shot and me personally every time i get the flu shot i always get sick like that's just the way my body works so I went to Rite Aid, I took my COVID test, and just to talk a, a little bit about that, that was really, really um, uncomfortable. It wasn't painful and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but they do give you a long stick, I want to say like this, and I don't know what you guys are thinking of it if you never got to the COVID test, but to me, I was thinking it was going to be a, a Q-tip for some reason, but it's not. Think of it as like a mascara brush, but like thinner and like, you know, really like more flimsy. What they do is they give you the brush and you snap off the brush and you insert it at, I swear I poked my brain, but um, I think I went to like right here, just to where I felt my eyes watering is where I stopped. And it wasn't painful, it was just really uncomfortable. And so you scrape one nostril and then you do the other nostril and then you send it back um, or you give it to back to the pharmacy and then they send it into the lab. It took me about three days to test results back and it came out negative. So I tested November 12th and then the next day, like literally the next day after I took my test, I started getting um, a cough and I was like, Oh no, like that's weird. But like I said, I thought it was the flu. So I started to get a cough. Um, and then, so that was, the no that was November 13th. So the next day, so the next day I test, I, the day after I texted, I started to feel sick. Then I think on the 15th is when I actually got my results back and it said negative. But by that time I was already sick. So from the 13th to the 15th while I was waiting for my test results, I was already sick. I had, um, so the symptoms that I got felt like the flu, but way worse. <laughs> um, and I mean, like I was coughing like all the time. Um, and I have asthma and my asthma gets really, really bad when I'm sick. So, um, my asthma was like pretty much I've never used my inhaler that much in my life like I use it like four or five times a day um, I got the chills I got the fever the highest fever I had was 103 and being pregnant obviously that's not good like none of this is good while you're pregnant but um, I brought down my fever um, I was extremely fatigued um, and I had some nausea and I just, I didn't want to eat anything. And I think it was just a mixture of being nauseous and 
Um, I had really bad headaches. So it was really weird. I've never really experienced anything like this before. Um, like I said, it felt like the flu, but like way more intense. And especially that I had my asthma along with it and just um, the fever like was really high. I think that's the highest I've ever had it go. And it was just really bad. Your chest starts tightening. Um, it felt like the mind was on fire and like I ate something really spicy and you know like when you have heartburn it felt like that but in my chest area it took me about oh, I want to say a good I want to say 14 or 15 days I want to say really like maybe a week ago is when I started to actually feel better and stop the cough the cough was like the last thing to go and I was downing cough drops like nobody's business. Like I, between me and my boyfriend, because he was still sick, we had to trade off. So like while he was getting better, he had to take care of our son. While I was still sick, but I didn't quarantine. Like I, I, I had to take care of my son because he was still sick. So it was really hard. And um, thank God our son didn't get sick. Our son's two and no he didn't have no symptoms um he was fine thank goodness but it hit us hard it hit i think it hit walter harder than it hit me and i think the baby helped me a lot because i have extra antibodies and i have extra white blood cells and the baby's like just pumping me up with everything so i think the baby actually helped me get better faster um but with him like there were some days where i'd go check on him and he was like in bed like you could just tell like he was in a lot of pain so it's just crazy how it hits people differently and with him he did lose the sense of smell and the sense of taste but I didn't so that's why I'm saying like I don't know if I had a false negative I possibly could have because I was literally exposed to it but it's, it's just it's just it hits people differently um, the virus is real. It's it's real, and um, you got to take care of yourself. But um, I still think I had it because I, I've never felt anything like that. One minute you're up, and you're like, "Ooh, okay, I feel a lot better. I'm getting over this." And the next hour you feel horrible. Like you just want to stay in your bed and just like have no one talk to you, and everything is heightened. And if you have a headache, like. Everything was bright to me. I couldn't look at one light bulb without getting like a tremendous pressure in my head. Like everything is intensified and it lasts longer and it's just crazy. This virus is crazy and I don't wish it on anyone. And yeah, so those were like the symptoms that I had. And so when I eventually started to get an appetite, I ate a little bit more, but because I'm pregnant, like I pushed myself to eat. You have to eat because your baby needs to eat still. What I ate was like chicken noodle soup, um, lots of Pedialyte, uh, lots of water. Like you have to down water. This virus is so important when you have to, you have to drink a lot of water. And if you're not pregnant, then you can have your ibuprofen. So ibuprofen with zinc and water is like the best way to fight this right now, I guess I'm hearing um, or what I was told. And, but for me, it's like I was pregnant, or I'm pregnant, the only thing I could take was Tylenol, so I was downing. Um, I had Tylenol once every 24 hours, but I only took it if I really needed it. Cough drops, water, <laughs> Pedialyte was pretty much my go-to's, like medicine-wise. And then I had crackers, um, tomato soup, and smoothies. Smoothies were the thing I think that kept me going because I liked the fruity taste and it was really light, it wasn't heavy and it made me feel nauseous. So that's pretty much all I can recommend. If you're pregnant and you're feeling the sick, even if it's just the flu, but I hope it's, I'd rather have it be the flu than be COVID, but that's what I recommend you eating. My advice to you guys, if you're pregnant and you think you're experiencing COVID, um, Go get tested, first of all. Um, even if you have a negative test result and you still feel sick, call your OB. Call your OB immediately and call your primary. And they're gonna tell you what they need you to do. Um, my primary didn't test 
COVID, I just went to Rite Aid and got my test there. Um, and then you, I, what, I called my OB and I told them I think I might have COVID, but I tested negative and all they said was, told me like kind of what to watch out for with the baby, just make sure I'm doing my kick counts because of how far along I am. I'm 30, at that time, I was like 30 weeks pregnant so they just told me to continue my kick counts, make sure that I'm drinking as much water as I can for the baby, just stay hydrated. I can only take one Tylenol once every 24 hours and just try to eat anything. And if I get worse or if I feel that bad where like my lungs, like can't, I can't breathe and they feel extra tightened, then to go call them back and go to the emergency room. But the fever that I told you guys, I got 103. Um, I have my EMT cert and my pharmacy cert, so I know I have a kind of a medical background. When you get a high fever like that, you're gonna wanna put them in your armpits and in your groin. And what that does, um, and you can put a wet towel. I had a wet towel on my forehead and behind my neck, and then I had the cold packs in my armpits. And what that does is that, that cools your body faster and it brings down your fever. That's why I wasn't too worried. I mean, I, 103 is bad, like that's a bad, but because I know how my body is and I already get fevers bad when I'm sick, I already know just to put the um, cooling pads in my armpits and the um, wet cloths behind my neck and on my forehead, that usually brings my fevers down pretty quick. So just call your primary, call your OB. They don't recommend you coming into the hospital. Just obviously quarantine yourself as much as you can. Drink a lot of water, like as double the amount that you normally drink. Drink Pedialyte, that helped me a lot. And it's gonna, you know, it's, it's hard because you don't wanna eat, but try to eat as much as you can. Just think of the baby and like the nutrients that they need and you just, you gotta keep going. But um, yeah, seeing, seeing it from Walter's point and from my point, and he thinks I have it, I had it because I was experiencing the same symptoms he was, just not as bad. Um, yeah, COVID's real. <laughs> COVID is a real thing and you know, just, be cautious when you're out, especially if you're pregnant, um, wear your mask. And you know what? If you don't have to go out, don't. Don't go out. I don't go out and look and um, when I do, I'm very good with washing my hands as soon as I get home. I don't touch anything I don't have to. Like before I'd go to Target, you know, when the days were good and I would touch everything and be like, I want to see this and this. But now the way things are i don't touch anything and i always wipe down the basket first and you just have to be more cautious because i feel like i got lucky and if i did have covid i feel lucky and blessed that it didn't hit me that hard i am grateful that it, i was able to come out of it as fast as i did because most people don't and that's what you have to be um, courteous and respectful of so wear your mask this isn't a joke it's affecting young people me and my boyfriend are not old <laughs> like we're in our mid 30s and you know I'm my sister-in-law is an RN and in the emergency room and she sees it all the time it's she sees young people coming in and now young people are passing away and it's not just old people so or older people so you know just be cautious and just because you don't want to wear your mask doesn't mean you're going to be around someone who has to take care of their mom or take care of their grandma or take care of their kid or they're pregnant. Like, so just be courteous, be respectful. And if you don't want to wear a mask, then don't go out because right now is not the time to be selfish. And just because you don't want to wear a mask because of some right that you think you have, well, I have the right to not be around you and wear a mask. So. It's just this whole big thing, but please be responsible. Please think of others, not just yourself, because I don't wish this upon anyone. And it's just, it's horrible. It's intense. It's the worst I've ever felt. And it's real. So anyway, I know that was pretty heavy, but I really wanted to share my story. And I feel like there's other pregnant ladies out there that may be possibly going through this and don't know what to expect and just know you, you can get through it just think of the baby and 
keep yourself healthy, drink fluids, eat what you can, and just contact your OB all the time. And I hope you guys got some kind of information out of this, or I, I hope this helps you or helps someone you know. And um, yeah, just be safe out there. Take it seriously. It's not a joke. It's not a political thing. It's real. It's real life. It's here. And we don't know how long it's going to be here. Yes, we have the vaccines, but that's like a whole other thing. But anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. And until next time.